Hello, and welcome to another Storytime Saturday. My name is Helena Murray, and today we are going to be reading Wild is the Wind. This book was provided to us once again by our friends at Brightside Bookshop. Make sure you visit them in store or online to find this book and other great books. Wild is the Wind by Graham Baker Smith. Cassie cradles the swift in the palm of her hand. She has nursed it, and now its wings no longer ache, except to feel the wind beneath them. All around her, swifts swoop and dive and call. Cassie knows they feel the idle air whispering of winter. She knows. They are wild and belong to the wind. And so the swift waits. Sensing the stories in the air, the fox in the thicket sniffing out her supper, and small furry things scenting danger on the wind, running for tree branch and burrow. It feels the breeze that stirs the leaves, urging the seeds of the butterfly trees to try their nut brown wings, but the butterfly trees are not yet ready to let them go. The land warms the air, making it less dense and lighter, and being lighter, it rises. Cooler air above the ocean rushes in, and the wind awakes. The seeds break free. Spiders waft skyward on threads of silk. The tiny bird rises from Cassie's hands, and like a drop of water thrown into a river, disappears into the fleet-winged flock. They know the path through the pathless sky. They sense each twisting upward lift. To them, this is not new. The wind is an ancient power, older even than they are. And their kind go back to the time of the dinosaurs. This pale revolving envelope of air, eggshell thin, is their home. But it also turns our turbines to make our cities bright in the dark. It has filled centuries of sails with the winds of trade and adventure. The swifts have seen it all. Around the still eye of a cyclone, mountains of clouds are carved into a great spiral howling with stormy power. The wind whips the waves, cresting each one like a conjurer's trick into wild white horses. In the desert where a million years ago an ocean glittered, the wind sculpts echoes in sand of those long vanishing waves, for the wind is the ceaseless shaper of the earth. It will labor for a thousand years, grinding and blowing at bedrock to make perfect streamlined shapes. They poke from the ground like the fins of a giant stone fish. There are caves the wind has made, like mouths in the rock. Sometimes the air flows in, sometimes out, as if the rock itself were breathing. But sometimes the wind makes something on a grand scale. For two million years it has carried desert dust and particles ground by glaciers to make a great plateau of rich yellow earth. Above it the swifts are near their journey's end. Three months in flight, 8,000 miles, never once touching the earth to arrive at a place far, far away from Cassie's healing hands. A place where Coon has been waiting all the long winter. He jumps for joy. He knows wherever the swifts are, summer follows. Beneath the eaves, the tiny traveler shakes the miles from its wings and rests and waits for its young to hatch. Briefly helpless, they quickly grow fat and strong. They hear the call of the wild wind. 
They already know the paths through the pathless sky. And when the time comes, they gather with the flock, sensing the shift in the turning air. They have promised the summer to elsewhere, but they have deserts to cross and seas to span and wild winds to ride. And a summer to carry to Cassie. The end. Thank you for joining me for this book. Make sure you visit Brightside Bookshop in downtown Flagstaff to find this book and come and visit us here at the Arboretum. Thanks so much. Have a great day.